Johnny stared at the painting while he waited to meet his supervisor. It creeped him out. Usually when one thinks of an art museum, they think of the Mona Lisa, or brightly colored paperweights that sold for millions each. But not this. The painting stood out for many reasons, not only because it was almost wall length or the light above seemed to be dim, but it wasn't as pleasant as the others. It was a picture of a naked woman, face partially hidden in shadow, while a big black snake curled around her body and rested its head on her shoulder. Its cold green eyes seemed to stare at the young security guard. It was just so unsettling to look at. Mr. Payton, Johnny nearly leapt out of his skin. He had been so focused on the snake he hadn't heard anyone approaching him. Oh, I'm so sorry. Johnny chuckled as the scare wore off. This painting, well, it gave you the creeps? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He reached out and shook Peter Weiss's hand. Mr. Weiss was a much older man. He was the day security guard for the museum and the one in charge of training Johnny before he left for the day. The graying man led him into the security office where they had a quick discussion about the job before they rose to gear up. Johnny was given a heavy flashlight that could double as a weapon if need be, a radio and a key card, so he could use the bathroom and check certain personal areas during his shift. The two men walked around the museum. Johnny had never been to this building before, so it doubled as a tour. There were many beautiful paintings, some inspired whimsy, some made him think of nice places to take holidays, but his mind always wandered back to that one painting that seemed to tower above him. The more they walked and admired the art gallery, the more the snake painting seemed out of place. And finally between these two, there's a blind spot for the cameras just big enough for a bloke to stand still. Mr. Wise gestured to two small sculptures which sat on their own pedestals. He then adjusted his sleeve and checked his watch and seemed relieved. Right, well, that's me, he declared, then led the younger man back to the office. There, Johnny was handed his flashlight, keys, and name tag, which felt redundant as he was going to be the only person in the building until six in the morning but he chose not to kick a fuss over something so minor. Johnny walked Mr. Wise to the main entrance and bid the man good night. He locked the doors and pressed the button that brought down the metal shutters over the door and windows. He winced at the loud metallic clanging until they reached the floor with a dull thud. He was alone. He let out a breath he'd been holding. Johnny loosened his tie before walking to the main head office, where he turned the lights off. All of them, except for the gentlemen's bathrooms. Hooking his keys onto his belt, he turned on his flashlight and officially began his watch. He whistled a tune he had heard earlier that day on the radio as he left the office, but he quickly stopped and turned his light to his left. He could have sworn he saw a pair of eyes staring at him, but it was just the snake and the woman from the painting. He stared at the two until he shuddered and began to feel ridiculous. He waved his flashlight over the pair, and the snake's eyes seemed to have some reflective paint used in them. Hmm, it's just a painting, he scolded himself. You're gonna need to get used to this sort of crap. And with that, he moved on. Two hours passed without incident. He kept on whistling until his eyes got used to the limiting light. For security reasons, there were small lights illuminating each piece, so one could see if something was misplaced. But for budget reasons, all the main lights were turned off, and the night watch was given a good flashlight instead. Now, he had never been the superstitious type, he always laughed at his friends who got scared from listening to dumb, scary stories, 
and yet an aspiring museum, with its dim lighting and painted faces staring at him. He started to get a little nervous. He needed this job, so he did as instructed and patrolled the building, checking behind each corner. He unbuttoned another button on his shirt. The isolation and darkness was slowly getting to him, and he had this gut feeling. Someone was following him. He went around and made his way back to the security office. He quickly checked the security logs to see if anyone had entered the building since his shift started, but all entries showed that once Mr. Wise had left, no doors leading outside had been opened. The emergency exits, the service entry, and the main doors had all remained locked this whole time. But just to be sure, Johnny rewound the CCTV footage of all the doors previously mentioned, but he still found nothing. He sat back in his chair, making it squeak as the back tilted with him, and ran his hands through his light brown hair. He was acting paranoid, and he needed to cut it out. He needed this job. He had been struggling for the last two years with finding steady work. And a security gig could be a good job to help him get back on his feet. He needed to cut this scaredy cat bullcrap and act like a man. He walked over to the mini fridge in the office where his sad supper of rice and beans waited for him, and he grabbed a bottle of Gatorade. He quickly drank it, the cold liquid waking him up a little and the sugar giving him a small rush. Feeling a little better, he grabbed his flashlight and marched back out to the museum and continued his patrol. Johnny checked his watch and squinted to see the time through its flashlight's glare. It was 3.11 a.m. He let out a big yawn and scratched his chin. He'd never worked a night shift before, so he wasn't used to being up at this time. He shook his head and blinked quickly to wake up a little. Two hours and fifteen minutes. He mumbled to himself before stretching and rubbing his eyes. He then dragged himself to the men's room, and after relieving himself, he splashed some water on his face, making his shirt a little wet. He looked up at his reflection and saw his eyes were just a tad red. Two hours and forty-five minutes. He reminded himself, then rubbed his eyes. With a sigh, he left the bathroom and strolled around the section that reminded him of comic books he used to read back when he was in high school, but walked a little slower as tiredness was catching up to him. He was walking back towards his starting point, where the creepy painting was, and saw the light above the foreboding portrait was flickering. He looked up at it. He wasn't allowed to do maintenance, but Mr. Payton did tell him that the faulty light bulbs needed to be replaced immediately. Then, he should leave a note for the custodian staff. Unfortunately for Johnny, the size of the art in question meant he needed to get a ladder out to reach the light. He retrieved one from the office and made sure to be careful as he set up the ladder in front of the painting, almost preventing himself from breathing near it. But the ladder was sturdy, so he managed to climb up without issue. Yet, when he looked, he was face to face with the snake. Its sinister green eyes locked with his. Johnny gulped and was too scared to move for even a second. He blew on the painting and nothing happened. The snake didn't move. Johnny started laughing at himself and rubbed the sweat from his forehead. The job was getting to him, but now he knew nothing was amiss, and so he climbed up and unscrewed the broken light bulb from its place. He was slowly stepping down when he looked over again and turned white as a ghost. The painting. How? The painting was empty. The snake and the woman were gone. The light bulb slipped out of his hand and shattered on the ground. Oh, damn it, he spat as he fell off the ladder. The sudden noise of the glass breaking startled him and made him lose his balance. He scrambled to stand up 
and shined his flashlight over the artwork again. There was nothing but a smoky black background, and that's when he heard something behind him, hissing. Johnny became stiff and felt his stomach drop into his shoes. He felt like he couldn't breathe. He didn't want to turn around, but he knew he had to. But by God, he didn't want to look behind him and see it. His body was shaking with a death grip on the flashlight, but he lifted his foot and turned around. The light reflected back on inky black scales on a long body. He started panting as he hesitantly moved the light upwards, revealing the massive head of a black snake. Its head was raised so that it was eye level with the man. It hissed again and poked out its pink forked tongue, like some kind of demon. It was giant. Its black body almost filled the hall. Johnny couldn't see it properly, but it looked as thick as an oil drum. He was frozen in fear as cold sweat ran down his face. The snake then opened its mouth, showing its prey thin rows of sharp teeth, perfect for latching on to its meal. It raised its head to strike, but Johnny was finally filled with adrenaline and dived out of the way. The serpent crashed into the ladder, and that gave the guard a few seconds to get away. He ran as fast as he could, his heart beating so hard he could feel it in his throat. He couldn't see a damn thing, but he kept on running, with his body refusing to let him stop. He could hear the beast trailing behind him, its long, cold body gliding effortlessly through the museum. Then he saw a light up ahead. The light of the bathroom was shining through, under the door. Johnny made a beeline and burst into the men's room, slamming the door shut. With his hand shaking, by some miracle, he pulled out a key and locked the door. He fell back when the snake slammed itself against it. Panting, Johnny grabbed his radio and screamed for help. Oh my god, help. This is Johnny Hall. Call 911. There's a giant snake in here. He waited for a response. Hello? I need help. To his horror, he realized there was no sound coming out of his radio. Not even feedback. He dropped the radio as it hit him. He was alone and stuck. And he heard the door bang again. He looked up as the snake rammed itself against the bathroom door. What in God's name? And it banged against the door again. It's breaking the door down? He cried out and then got up as the door began to break and crack. It wouldn't hold for very long. He ran into one of the bathroom stalls and locked it moments before the snake crashed into the bathroom door. He forced his hand over his mouth to stop himself from making a sound or breathing too hard. He watched its shadow from the fluorescent lights slither across the white tiled floor, looking for him. Johnny had lifted his feet onto the toilet and hoped that the creature would not find him, but it stopped right outside his stall and pressed its nose to the opening between the door and the floor, then poked its wet tongue in. It missed him, but the snake raised itself and spotted Johnny from the opening above. Johnny's mouth went dry. The snake hissed at him then slammed its head against the door. Johnny needed to stop panicking and think of a way out. Think, Johnny, think, he ordered himself. He looked up and thought the distance between the stall and the ceiling would be enough for him to squeeze through. Then I could run for the office, he told himself. There was a landline in the office, but even if that didn't work, there was still his cell phone and a panic button. Plus, the security office door, which was much sturdier than the bathroom doors or so he hoped. The snake crashed into the door again and Johnny could already see it was ready to break. He knew it was a long shot, but his other option was dying. He stood up and climbed up on the lid of the toilet and tried to time it perfectly, praying he was fit enough to pull it off. The beast broke the door down and Johnny leapt over the stall into the next, landing on his feet. 
Snake's body was holding the door open, so he dived out. The snake was quick, but the bathroom was narrow, which brought Johnny a little extra time as it had to maneuver out of the cramped space. Holding his flashlight up, he ran as fast as he could but he heard the thing break out of the room and let out an angry hiss. He turned the corner and saw the dark hall where the cursed painting still waited, unlit. He never thought he'd be so happy to see it again. He got so close, but something gripped him and he fell, his hand landing on the broken glass from earlier. He cried out in pain as suddenly the lights around him lit up. He was blinded, but the first thing he saw was his hand, with a piece of glass impaled on his index finger. He looked behind him and saw the giant black snake just looking at him. Johnny rushed to his feet and tried to unhook his keys from his belt, but his index finger couldn't bend. He backed away while cradling his hand and then noticed the snake wasn't moving, just staring at him. He was so confused. But then he realized the snake was not looking at him, but behind him. Before he could look behind himself, a woman reached around and grabbed him with her long claw-like nails and slit his throat. Johnny tried to scream, but blood filled his windpipe as he struggled to breathe. He fell to the floor and looked up to see the woman from the painting. The next morning, at 6 a.m. sharp, Mr. Wise entered the museum through the service entrance and went about his job. Turning on the needed lights and opening the doors for staff, he made his way to the security office, and on the desk was a guard's uniform, folded neatly with a name tag marked Johnny. He picked up the radio that had been laying next to the clothes and pulled out two batteries from his pocket and put them inside the device. He sighed heavily as he left the office, glancing at the eerie painting. The painting of a big black snake curled around a naked man.